First, as always, we're on their trail, digging up the presidential candidate's biggest misstatements, blunders, and cheap shots on the road to the White House. Tonight, what's probably the biggest red meat statement for on their trail that we've seen so far. One long sentence with four attacks uttered by Senator Obama today in Colorado. It has so infuriated the Clinton campaign that they fired off this press release before he even gave the speech, attempting to debunk each one of Obama's claims. We're going to break down the accusations one by one and tell you who's right and wrong. Here to help separate fact from fiction, MSNBC political analyst Rachel Maddow. She's also a host for Air America Radio and political analyst Lawrence O'Donnell. Okay. Let's listen to Senator Obama's statement today in its entirety. The Clinton campaign says it contains four misleading attacks. The way to win a debate with John McCain or any Republican who's nominated is not by having the Democrats nominate someone who agreed with them on voting for the war in Iraq, who agreed with them in voting to give George Bush the benefit of the doubt on Iran who agrees with him in embracing the Bush-Cheney policy of not talking to leaders we don't like, who actually differed with John McCain by arguing for exceptions for torture before changing positions when the politics of the moment change. Ouch! Let's address Senator Obama's claims one at a time. Number five, you just heard it, Obama going after Clinton over her Iraq, Iraq war vote saying, quote, the way to win a debate with John McCain is not by nominating someone who agreed with him on voting for the war in Iraq. On this one, I say Obama is playing fair. Clinton did vote for the war in Iraq while Ob Obama opposed it at the beginning. Now, in their attempt to debunk Obama's claim, the Clinton campaign is guilty of twisting his statement, saying, quote, with the exception of Hillary's opposition to the promotion of Iraq war architect General George Casey, Senator Obama and Hillary have identical voting records on the Iraq war. True. Identical in the Senate. True. But he has to get some credit for speaking out against the war before it happened. Do you agree, Rachel Maddow? I do agree, actually. I think that it is important to people who are uh, war voters, people for whom the war is the most important issue. I'd consider myself in that camp. It matters that he has voted to continue funding the war. He hasn't taken a leadership role on trying to end it the way that some other Democratic well, senators have. But he wasn't in the Senate yeah, I mean, in 2002. He, he, he couldn't have cast that vote. But he says if he had been in the Senate then, he would have well, cast it the right way. But, but Lawrence, he's got to be able to take some credit for his speech in 2002, right? Yeah, sure he does. He's on the record very clearly at the time about how he thought about it. And uh, Dan, listen, last week we did uh, rule against Hillary on a lot of these things, and I'd love to shift the balance tonight <laughs> if we can. But on this one, uh, I'm with Obama. Uh, we're all, all right. So we're all in unison then on that one yeah. goes to Obama. Number four, Obama linking Hillary to McCain and then President Bush on Iran. Who agreed with him in voting to give George Bush the benefit of the doubt on Iran. All right, I think this is a clear misstatement on Obama's part. Clinton did side with President Bush in voting to label Iran's Revolutionary Guard a terrorist organization, but she did not agree to give the president the benefit of the doubt on Iran. In fact, she actually argued on the House floor that he has to get authorization from Congress before taking any military action against Iran. What do you make of that one, Lawrence? Uh, I, I guess I'm leaning your way now, Dan, having heard your case. I, I, I got to say, uh, Hillary, Hillary alone among Democrats running for president cast that vote with President Bush uh, regarding Iran. Yeah, and Joe Biden was very strong about pointing out why he thought that was yeah. a bad a vote, as well as the rest of them. So she is separate from Obama on she this, is. but I think the way he phrased exactly. it uh, is going gonna, is gonna to put me on your side on and, this and, one. Say giving President Bush the benefit of the doubt, I mean, that's not what the vote was about. I think that's a fair right. way to characterize it. Really? That's not the, I would call this one a draw, and I'll tell you why. I think that was an outrageous vote by Hillary Clinton in terms of uh, what we've seen in Iraq and how it translates to what we're seeing in Iran right now. But Barack Obama voted, didn't miss that vote. So he can't call Hillary Clinton out on having voted for it when he didn't show up to vote no on it. Yeah. That's the only reason I call it a draw. But I don't quibble with his characterization of the vote. Oh, I, I think mischaracterization. All right, number three. Obama attacks Clinton's approach to diplomacy, again comparing her to McCain and Bush. Who agrees with him in embracing the Bush-Cheney policy of not talking to leaders we don't like. Uh, come on. 
Big misstatement by Obama on this one. Senator Clinton never said anything like that. This is Obama trying to turn his own blunder into a negative for Clinton. Remember, Obama promised that in his first year he'd meet with the leaders of Iran, Syria, Venezuela, Cuba, North Korea without any preconditions. Clinton called that naive and simply said she wouldn't make the same promise. She never said she wouldn't meet with those leaders. She, I think, I give this one to Obama, actually. I think that Clinton tried to turn that to her advantage. She thought it was a big blunder. But the fact is that Obama now cites that and every time he gives his stump speech. He has turned that to his advantage with Democratic-based voters by saying, you can't be afraid to meet with these guys. You don't need to but hold again, it he's as a reward But for he's mischaracterizing for what she said. I mean, that's the point. I mean, Lawrence, she is, he is mischaracterizing what Clinton has said about, about meeting with world leaders. I mean, this is his blunder. That he's trying to now he's saying, turn it around. He's saying he well, would meet without preconditions, and she's saying all she would the, not meet without preconditions. Yeah, with all the leaders of, of you know of the enemies, quote unquote, enemies of the United States. Yeah. And, and and the bottom line is that that the way Obama characterized it there is suggesting that she's now adopting the Bush Cheney policy. I mean, it's nonsense. Well, you're right, Dan. I mean, he is oversimplifying it, which is considered generally fair in politics. Uh, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of with both of you on this one. I'm on the fence on this one. Lawrence, uh, you're such but, a whip. Uh, you're not. Obama, Obama doesn't make this easy. Obama makes this very difficult. His language is very careful. He's designing it to confuse me, Dan, and he's right. succeeding at it. Uh, but I'm leaning in your direction on that one, too. All right. Number Obama. two, well. Senator Obama says McCain was right in opposing any form of of torture while Hillary flip-flopped. Who actually differed with John McCain by arguing for exceptions for torture before changing positions when the politics of the moment change. On this one, I got to say, I think a, a very fair attack by Obama. Clinton did apparently change her position on these exceptions. She claims the change came after meeting with various military officials and reading defense reports, but that doesn't immunize you from being accused of being a flip-flopper. I mean, that's politics. Uh, this is, this for me, this again is one of those perfect things where it's like, oh right, this is why we don't elect senators. It looks like <laughs> we're going to probably elect a senator on the Democratic side. It's because what you're arguing for versus what you vote for and whether it was the amendment or the final vote and what had a signing statement when it finally got passed, it's so hard to find a single position in the middle of all that legislative but, process. But I, I don't know, Lawrence, I think this is one of the ones where Obama, this is pure fair politics to me. He's calling her it's, out for changing her position. It is fair politics, but I agree with Rachel. Having worked in the Senate, I've watched senators work their way to their final position, and they kind of sample different ideas along the way. I have great sympathy for the way Hillary worked her way through that, but Obama's got the shot, and he's taking it in a pretty fair way. All right, so that's where, that's where we, we are right now, at least on my scorecard. Uh, <laughs> sounds like Rachel might be three for Obama, one for Clinton. Uh, on this, and Lawrence is like four, I don't for, know what four I am, for each man. side. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, number one, Senator Obama caught by a photographer at the State of the Union address, seemingly snubbing Clinton. On this one, Obama's campaign has changed its account. Here's how Obama explained it to reporters yesterday. There was the photograph in the Times about sort of me turning away. I was turning away because Claire asked me a question as Senator Kennedy was reaching forward. But this is what Obama's top campaign strategist said about it the same day on Morning Joe. And I don't think he wanted to stand there while Senator Kennedy was greeting Senator Clinton. And I think that was an appropriate uh, sentiment. And I think it's understandable that he would not want to stand there with Senator Kennedy as if he were uh, 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 lording it over her. All right, look, this is definitely gotcha game here, but it's certainly a flip-flop. And even if the picture tells no words, this is politics. It ends up being a blunder for the Obama campaign. Lawrence? Well, look, as I said last night on, on, on MSNBC, I, I worked in the Senate. I saw senators do this all the time. They get very tense with each other for days at a time, sometimes longer than that. Then they're buddies again. Uh, I don't think anything of it. I can't believe there's a voter out there who's going to make up his or her <laughs> yeah. mind on the basis no. of this picture. I hope not. Here's, here, here's, what, Clinton, here's what Hillary Clinton right. said about it. Do you feel that you were snubbed last night? Well, Chris, I reached out my hand in friendship and unity, and um, my hand is still reaching out, and I look forward to uh, shaking his hand when I see him at uh, uh, the debate in California.
All right, look, I called it a blunder by the Obama, but that, you know, honestly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that one makes you want to, like, oh, I come on, a hand in yeah. unity. I mean, that was obnoxious. Uh, come on. I don't mm. care if Barack Obama was, like, giving another senator the Heimlich maneuver at yeah. that point. Like, this is a still photo. It's much ado about nothing. Democrats do not hate as much, hate each other as much as we want to make All the right, story. But I still give this one, you know, honestly, I gave this one to Clinton on, on my scorecard because of the, the, uh, the blunder, but, but then you saw the I just, I just saw that last comment, and it makes me not. It makes me want to take away that last one. So I'm <laughs> going to call this one a draw um, between Clinton and Obama. And um, Rachel Maddow and Lawrence O'Donnell, thanks a lot. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Dan.